Welcome to the elliptical generation tutorial for gyrotic motion. We're going to take a look at the parameters involved in generating an elliptical gear. There aren't a whole lot of parameters to uh, be concerned about, so it's likely to be a very short video. As you can see on the screen when you go to the elliptical generation, uh, there are two elliptical gears present. The thing that a lot of people don't understand about elliptical gears is that if we look at a first order elliptical gear, we end up with a gear which is off center on its shaft. A second order elliptical gear will have a center on the shaft, such as the one on the right here. Any higher order than one will always have its shaft centered. But a third order elliptical gear, for example, if we generate one here, you'll see is a triangle. A fourth order elliptical gear is a square. Now there's very little control that you have over the generation of these ellipticals. Elliptical gears follow mathematical laws that have to be observed if you want the gears to mesh. So you don't have a lot of free play. You can pick the order of each of the gears that you're about to build. You can choose their eccentricity. An eccentricity of zero is a round gear. The higher the eccentricity, the more squashed the gear is. There's always a but and the but in this case is that as two elliptical gears rotate they experience different pressure angles on the teeth. Unlike a spur gear which you set the pressure angle at an industry standard of 20 and you know that your meshing is fine, with elliptical gears as they rotate uh, the pressure angle actually changes. Now these elliptical gears are generate, generated with a process called the osculating circle and I'm working now on a new algorithm uh, which is a variable pressure angle algorithm which will give a a better meshing between gears. These elliptical gears will mesh fine as long as you follow the rule of checking your maximum pressure angle. Whenever you generate two elliptical gears, the system checks to see what the maximum effective pressure angle is. In other words, at what point in the rotation is the pressure angle the highest? You don't want to exceed a pressure angle of about 45 degrees if you do, you're going to end up with some meshing difficulty. The default, as you start uh, gyrotic motion and go to the elliptical screen, you'll see that the maximum pressure angle is about 46 degrees. And that's about the worst pressure angle, or the highest pressure angle that you would want to use for two gears if you don't want tight meshing and problems with rotation. My advice is to keep it at 40, the 46 is fine, but anything less than that is fine, but never go higher. Uh, to lower the maximum effective pressure angle, you would simply need to lower the eccentricity of the gears, is one example. And if I go to a 0.5 eccentricity, a zero eccentricity, by the way, would be a round gear, but a 0.5 eccentricity now lowers our maximum pressure angle to 40 degrees. And as that maximum pressure angle lowers, the meshing becomes better and better. And if I zoom in on the teeth of these two gears and let you see the simulation of them rotating, you can see that there's no collisions going on and everything looks as if it would roll properly, just as if they were spur gears. This is because our maximum pressure angle is kept low. It is through this area of this these swing teeth closest to the shaft uh, where the pressure angle reaches its maximum limits. Once we get away from there, the pressure angles tend to steady out and things begin to look um, somewhat better. So anyway, that's something to keep in mind is that your pressure angles, maximum effective pressure angle should be kept as low as possible. If you want a higher eccentricity, you may have to lower your pressure angle uh, request in order to get that maximum pressure angle uh, in this area here under 45. Keeping it 40 will probably keep you pretty happy with the results. The other thing to consider is with spokes you want to keep your rim ratio and perhaps the number of spokes up because you have a fair amount of dead space between spokes to support. And if you're cutting these out of wood as many of us do, um, it's important that you have some support through here so they don't just snap off on you if they hit a rough period or rough area of rotation. Um, they're very similar to spur gears in almost every other respect. You can place them on the screen. You can only mesh an elliptical with another elliptical. You cannot mesh an elliptical with a spur gear. Uh, just looking at them, I think that you can see they have some pretty strange, uh, pretty strange properties. 
and other than the fact that they run at variable speeds as the uh, master rotates they're really more of a kinetic art type of gear these days while 40 50 years ago they were used extensively in industry uh, we now have computers and other process control techniques that have pretty much made elliptical gears obsolete the fact that they're obsolete though just makes them a bit more interesting and I find that looking at any device with elliptical gears in it uh, kind of fascinating to watch it's it's somewhat mesmerizing and you'll find that when you add them to your project screen and begin to build devices from them that they do get somewhat mesmerizing and they're also somewhat surprising in their effects if we take two elliptical gears and put them together and add a third elliptical gear to the top you'll see what I mean by unexpected effects. These gears do not rotate as most people at first would think. And remember here that only the master gear, which is at the bottom, is, is rotating. The other two gears are moving to the positions that the physics tell them to move to. But watch the speed effect as this gear begins to hit, as the master gear begins to hit the outside of its rotation, the distance furthest from its shaft. Things suddenly take a very fast twist and the gears flip around. This is kind of a handy motion if you're making a whirly gig or some sort of Rube Goldberg machine. It's very artistic and it's got a nice kinematic feel to it, which is one of the reasons that uh, the elliptical gears were done in the first place. They're just a cool thing to play with. So that's pretty much it for elliptical gears. Keep your eye on your maximum pressure angle. Make sure you don't exceed 45 degrees or so unless you're willing to play with center shaft centering and so on to loosen things up a bit. Keep your spokes so that you've got lots of space for them and uh, you should be able to generate all the elliptical gears you want. Thanks.